All right, guys, we're gonna be feeding the Bushmasters. I've got some defrosted chicks and rats right here. I'm gonna feed off to some other animals, too. Ooh, look at that, guys. Did you see that? I'm keeping my eye on his head, because even though I've had him for quite some time, he could still potentially bite me when I'm not paying attention. This is still a dangerous animal. It is a king cobra. It is the longest, largest venomous snake, and it will bite me if he gets a chance. Just like that. Right, Kevin? If there's one type of snake that I am fond of, a snake that I love so much, a snake that I'll put myself in danger to work around. A snake that puts the... A snake that puts fear in many Central and South American natives. A snake that has one of those potent venoms on the planet. A snake! Are you listening? A snake! That scientific name translates to silent death. Very dangerous. Today, we're going to be dealing with the Bushmaster. Are you guys ready? Come on, say it with me. You ready? Bushmaster! Alright guys, we're going to be feeding the Bushmasters. I've got some defrosted chicks and rats right here. I'm going to feed off to some other animals too. And what we're going to do is we're going to feed her. we got our big female right here that actually just came through shit. So we're going to check that out, see how she looks. We're going to feed the male in the enclosure over here. And then we're going to go clean up Kevin the King Cobra because like I said before, he has a big python in his belly digesting. He's been going to the bathroom a lot and... I can smell that he left me a little present. So we're gonna go clean that up in a bit and you're gonna see big old Kevin the King Cobra. So I'll see you guys when I get my tongs and the rats ready. Very nice. Oh, very nice. This is a good one. This one will live a good life. Good nutrients in this one. He's right here. We've got the male Bushmaster just poised, ready to go. Let me see that camera real quick. Let's we'll see if I can get you guys a real good shot. Look how beautiful this male is getting. He's hanging out right here near the entrance. And he's pretty keen for food because it's bad. It's been probably a little over a week since he's eaten. So, we're gonna offer a smaller rat right around here. We just ran some warm water over these guys. So there's a good heat signature. This, this is a heat-seeking pit viper. They've got huge heat pits right on the front of their face. So, in the dark of the night, when they can't see anything, they completely rely on these heat pits to find a warm-blooded mammal, like the silly rats, which I love to eat out in the wild. They live around a big spiky tree, and these bush masters will be found right in the buttresses of the tree, or right below the tree, waiting for these rats. Ready? Want some food? Oh, and that shoots right up. Ready? Boom, look at that. Look at that. And notice a little bit of bleeding right off the bat because of how long the fangs are on a Bushmaster. Even though this Bushmaster is just over a year old, it has fangs as long as an adult Eastern Dunback rattlesnake, which is the world's largest rattlesnake. This snake is just gorgeous. He's pumping venom into that chest cavity. They have an insane amount of venom in that venom yield. Because right behind the head, this portion all back here would be venom gland. And that's a deadly, deadly hemotoxic venom. That'll leave you dead, no joke. That scientific name, Lachesis muda, translates to silent death. Because the natives will walk out into the night, not being able to see barefoot, and they get hit by the snake. And this snake, the only kind of warning, the only kind of sound they can give off to say, hey, get away, is to rattle their tail in the leaf litter making a sound. But if you don't hear that, you're not going to see that snake coming. It's a silent predator. It's an ambush predator. It's meant not to get noticed. So you've got to be extremely careful when traveling throughout Central and South America because there are not just Bushmasters, but many different species of pit viper that could easily land you a bite. But you can easily enjoy these countries as long as you watch where you step and have the proper footwear. Just, you know, bring a flashlight. What's interesting is an animal that lives in the rainforest, this species can't get too wet, so they like to keep themselves nice and dry hidden in logs when it's raining out. If they get too exposed to moisture, they get what's called red belly. It's kind of like a scale rot on the bottom of their belly and they eventually die from it. It's a bit of a fungal infection as well, like switchblades coming back and forth. They stay hidden in the sheath on the top jaw, but when ready, they use those fangs to work the rat right into the stomach of the animal. 
with a combination of its beautiful looks, its earthy colors in the eyes, the black saddles going down this animal's back, their dragon-like feel as they get older, when their scales become these modified spikes, and this snake just being one of the most reputable, beautiful, dangerous snakes of the planet. This is why this is one of my favorite animals, one of my favorite snake species. This is my favorite viper, the Bushmaster. guys it looks like he's beginning to finish up just that last bit of tail you can see in between the beautiful coloration of this snake the insane myths and legends behind it when it comes to what people say about it in its native range you know it having venom in its tail and coming after you and you might have to chop its head off and chop its tail off and bury them in two different spots the crazy myths that have been created around the species the beauty of this animal. There's so much about this species that's such a drawing animal to me. I think they're the most beautiful viper species on the planet. And I hope you guys like them too, because I'm gonna film plenty more Bushmasters in the future. What we need to do is find one out in the wild. What I'd like to do is try to meet up with some sort of conservation group out there that studies Bushmasters. I know there's a few groups out there who want to try and get into contact so we can help support Bushmasters out in the wild. We're doing it with King Cobras, we're going to be doing it with Crocodiles, and I want to add Bushmasters to the list. So, if you're a conservationist out there that works with Bushmasters, please get a hold of us. We have an email with the link below and let us know what we can do to help. Let's move on to the next Bushmaster. I got a big, beautiful female here. I know she's come out of shed, so she's gonna look amazing. And she's also gonna be on point when it comes to feeding. She's gonna be dangerously accurate. Remember, this is a heat-seeking animal. This is a missile. Basically, any heat signature that comes within five feet of the snake, it knows when it's coming, and when it, when it knows, it knows, and it shoots out like a dark watch. Look at that, guys! Did you see that? That's what I'm talking about. That is why the Bushmaster is such a dangerous snake to work with. When it comes to feeding them, their strike range is immense. This is very dangerous what I'm doing right now, but i got to move this stuff so I can collect all the shed skin. The reason I say this is dangerous, even though that snake has a rat in its mouth, a good friend of mine was feeding a Bushmaster the same size as the snake. It bit down on the rat just like that, and in a split second, it let go of the rat, shot forward, and hit him with one bang. He nearly died from that bite, and it wasn't even a full-on bite, it was a scrape from a Bushmaster. But you know what saved his life? He had anti-venom on stock, and that's something that we're going to be investing in into the future. So, very carefully, I'm watching the snake. To pull out that shed skin. This is really good. Looks like the shed came off completely. There we go. All right, we're gonna let her start chowing down on that food. Get nice, relaxed, and you're gonna see engulf that rat. It's nothing. Alright guys, she hasn't eaten this rat, and she's been investigating it for probably half an hour to 45 minutes now. I want to change it up, try to offer her a check and see if this makes a difference. So we're going to put this food in there, and see if she has any interest in taking out a check. No? Yes? Yeah? Ooh, there we go. Alright. She's biting down on this chick. Maybe she felt like eating a chick instead of a rat this week, so we'll see if she eats that whole thing. Shoot. 
Perfect. Locked and secured. Now we're going to be taking care of Kevin, the king of old snakes here at the snake house. He's about a 14, 15 foot long Malaysian king cobra. All right, guys, we're going to be taking out Kevin. He has a bit of a mess in his enclosure. He's gone to the bathroom all around his water bowl, up on the glass, so I have quite a bit of cleaning to do. I could smell it from when I walked into this snake house, so I really don't want him to sit inside this enclosure with all that poop. Because of all that ammonia, I can smell it already. It's not good for the animal, and you don't want them to fixing it on that. Ugh, all right, I can't get this piece of glass out because there's poop all over the side of it. It's just going to smear everywhere. So let me just get my snake hook and see if we can get Kevin out this way. It looks like his coloration is a bit darker because of this food he's been eating. He's growing a bit more. So he might be going to shed soon. Come here. I'm sorry. Relax, relax, that's okay. Oh, he's got a little bit of poop on his belly. We're gonna have to try to clean that off of him. We don't want poop all over his belly. Whoa. All right, Ruth, can you grab me a paper towel? He's got some poop smeared right on his belly seals right here. So the thing about king cobras or snakes in general, if they go to the bathroom inside their enclosure and they sit in it, it'll begin to cause scale rot. We had a minor problem with that not too long ago, probably about like six months ago. And I was treating him with Lotrimin to get off those nasty scales, or at least treat those nasty scales that started to rot from that fecal matter. I'm keeping my eye on his head, because even though I've had him for quite some time, he could still potentially bite me when I'm not paying attention. This is still a dangerous animal. It is a king cobra. It is the longest, largest venomous snake. And it will bite me if he gets a chance. Just like that. Right, Kevin? All right, so he's got his poop all over my hands. Just gotta make sure he's completely good to go on the rest of his body. Because the last thing we want is more scale rot. We've already treated it. We don't want to deal with that again. Okay, it looks like he's got some poop on the tip of his tail right here. Nothing like wiping my snake's booty. Just like a little kid. There we go. All right, we're good to go. It looks like Kev is nice and clean now. Right here in the camp. Oh, you're getting so big. Come here. Nice and easy. You're such a big boy. Let me just put your leg right there. Okay. Nice and easy. Perfect, okay, good to go. Now I need to wash my hands. I got all that poop on my fingers. It's really important to make sure that he doesn't have any wet, fresh poop on his scales that will cause the scale rot. We don't want to deal with that again. He's a perfect, beautiful snake, and just a little bit of poop can ruin his shedding process. That's very irritating for a snake, so we don't want that. Let me clean my hands off, and we're gonna to get to clean that enclosure. All right, guys, we got the enclosure nice and clean. Just gonna move the can. We're gonna throw the glass back up. Let Kevin go back to relaxing. Oh, I wonder how Justina's doing. Hey, Justina. It seems like she's doing pretty good. Let's, let's let her be. Let's let her be. Put that to the side. We move this bowl. Move this stuff. We'll take Kevin out. Let me use my hook just to see where he's at. Oh, he's just relaxing. Look how beautiful he is. Even though it looks like he's going to be going into shed and his colors are a bit more dull, he's still one of the most beautiful king cobras I've ever laid my eyes on. You know, scratch that. He is the most beautiful king cobra I've ever seen. Oh, Kevin's a little upset today. What's up, Kevin? Should I use the hook today? I think I should use the hook. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. There we go. Oh, big boy. Oh, there we go. Look at him. You are such a beast of a king cobra. Looks like he's doing good. He's taking down the last couple meals, no problem. He should be shedding soon, which is really good. We got a lot of big things to come soon, guys. Hopefully, in the next six months or so, we'll be working on Kevin's new enclosure, and that's gonna be a big walk-in King Cobra enclosure. That's gonna be awesome. We have big things to come. We're actually gonna be expanding a lot on this channel. We're thinking about doing not just a second channel for extra bits, more comedy, more things to show off, but we're also thinking about doing a podcast channel, and we're about to open up a Patreon. Patreon this week, 
We'll be doing personalized messages. We'll be showing videos. We'll be doing all kinds of things that won't be happening on the YouTube channel itself. So check out Patreon. We have four tiers for what we offer on Patreon. Awesome package deals for the fans. It's all for the fans. So if you guys want to see more of my wild life and more to come, we will be expanding to two more channels and to Patreon. So check it out, guys, as well as check out the King Cobra Conservancy, the organization that protects King Cobras out in the wild of Southeast Asia and India. So check it out, guys. I'll see you on the next Chandler's Wildlife. Stay beautiful, stay safe, but most of all, love your reptiles and love your family.